Highford Berry again added sound cards for the Raspberry Pi to their program. Some, like the DAC Plus Zero for use with the Raspberry Pi Zero, didn't interest me that much, but the Digi Plus Pro did. In essence, the Digi Plus Pro is equal to the Digi Plus Transformer, but now fitted with a separate clock oscillator for 44.1 and 48 kHz and their multiples. They did the same with their DAC Plus Pro and the idea is that it further improves jitter performance. The Digi Plus Pro now also has a mounting place for a BNC connector for the SPDIF output. Especially when you use a DA converter that has a BNC input, this provides a purer 75 ohm connection. Go to a professional video shop and buy a 75 ohm BNC to BNC cable of the right length and you have a good low cost solution. If you can spare more, an audiophile cable might further improve the sound but they are slightly harder to find. The BNC chassis connector for the Digi Plus Pro must be ordered separately from Hi-Fi Berry and soldered on by yourself. As with almost all Raspberry Pi sound cards, mounting the Digi Plus Pro is as easy as screwing four spacers on the Raspberry Pi, pressing the Digi Plus Pro on the GPIO connector and fixing it with four nuts. You then have to decide what software to use. Here Hi-Fi Berry is surely ahead of the competition since they have the Hi-Fi Berry installer, a small program available for Windows and Mac that queries you and then comes up with suggestions of programs to choose from. When you have made your choice, the installer automatically prepares the micro USB card for use with the appropriate Hi-Fi Berry drivers. Ideal for those that don't want to learn Linux or other computer nazis but do want to use the Raspberry Pi with the Hi-Fi Berry card. The Hi-Fi Berry app is currently being updated and even Rune Ready endpoint software will be available through the app. Currently, if you want to use the Raspberry Pi as Rune Ready endpoint, you need to download an image from the Hi-Fi Berry site and bake it on a micro SD card yourself. For instance, using Apple Pie Baker on a Mac or Win32 Disk Imager for Windows. After you have inserted the micro SD card into the card slot on the Raspberry Pi and hooked it up to the network and with the DA converter, you're set to go. I've used the Digit Plus Pro on a Raspberry Pi 3B running Volumio 2 and Rune Ready endpoint software. As always, you can skip the tech by going to the timecode above. As with all the Raspberry Pi sound cards, it picks up the digital audio from the GPIO connector in the form of an I2S signal. The advantage of I2S is that it has separate buses for the audio data and the clock signal. If your DAC has an I2S input, you might see if you could connect it directly to the Raspberry Pi or solder a connector to the Digi Plus Pro and use that. In all other cases SPDIF will be needed and the Digi Plus Pro uses the Wolfson WM8804B digital interface transceiver to convert from I2S to SPDIF. As said, two separate clock oscillators are used to further reduce jitter. Measurements indeed showed lower figures, but the problem with jitter measurements, at least the ones that I know, is that there is little correlation between the audibility and the jitter figures unless they are really bad. Something similar applied to comparing the parts used. The Walsam chip here can perform far less when mounted on a poor PCB design. A given DAC chip might sound quite different as a result of poor PCB design. Of course, when the, an old chip design is used, performance might be less since Moore's law shows us that the power of the chip steadily improves over time. What you can influence is adding a print header to the Digi Plus Pro and connect a linear power supply directly to it. You then no longer have to connect the power supply to the Raspberry Pi. See my Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus Part 2 video for more details. Another thing that can, but not always will, make a difference is a galvanic separation between the devices. Like the Digi Plus Transformer, the Digi Plus Pro uses SPDIF Output Transformer that provides this separation. 
How can a digital device sound? It's the DAC that makes the difference for it makes the sound. Wrong. The amount of jitter and the kind of jitter, the pollution of the ground plane due to switching power supply or ground loops and incorrect output impedance of the SPDIF output, it all makes a difference. Even switching of the Raspberry Pi when in use might temporarily decrease the sound quality every time you start listening again. I use the Raspberry Pi with DigiPlus Pro connected to the Cord Hugo in my set 1. There it had to challenge the SOTM SMS200, not a fair fight by any standards since the SOTM cost over 500 euros excluding the linear power supply. That's over 6 times more than a Raspberry Pi with DigiPlus Pro board and also ex excluding a linear power supply. The SOTM uses async USB as output as where the Raspberry Pi with DigiPlus Pro board outputs isochrone SPDIF. Despite of the bits are bits brigade that is always audible. In my set 2 the differences are clearly smaller and in my set 1 I no longer have a DAC with SPDIF input but I guess the difference might probably be inaudible. The DigiPlus Pro cost 40 euros, only 5 more than the DigiPlus Transformer. All the difference in sound in my case was very small, using other more digital sensitive DACs might give different results. I would spend the extra 5 euros just to be sure. The board auto configures when the OS and the player supports that too and if not there always is a Hi-Fi Berry installer that will make the software installation a breeze. Like other SPTIF boards the sound quality is very good giving the price and the support is fantastic. But the enemy never sleeps and I expect new developments very soon. So if you want to stay informed subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. If you have questions please post them below this video but don't ask me for buying advice. View my about questions video to find out why. You find more information below this video. If you like this video please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and tell your friends on the web about it. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you the next time show or on the hbproject.com. And uh, whatever you do, enjoy the music.